30 million ounces of gold and 800 million ounces of silver in this environment has a death wish. It's the same stupidity that uh, if we were to take the price of silver or the price of gold right now of, of 2000 and let me just do a little math here, $2,041 and we divide it by seven, that's $291. If tomorrow morning or Monday morning, I'm not saying that's gonna happen, but if the price of silver were, were valued at $291 an ounce, that's not crazy. To me, it's wealth, not an investment, but the investment potential is extraordinary. In the last 24 hours, we've seen a decimation of availability. The same exact thing that I've been harping on now for the better part of a year and a half with you and your listeners is happening in real time. Last night, I was talking to a very large client of mine's mother. He asked me to talk to mom and uh, talking about Silver Eagles. And I said, listen, you know, at, at uh, 875 or $9 over spot on Silver Eagles, we're cheaper than anyone in the country. And by the time I hung up the phone, every major dealer in America was roughly between 11 and $12 over the price of silver on Silver Eagles. Uh, what this is indicative of is the inability to get new product uh, at, at the same price. The, the big distributors are jacking up their prices and availability is becoming um, scarce. And you know, when I, we've talked about this before, when I look at this, I'm looking down the line. And down the line is not easy. Um, you know, I'm already looking again at the uh, UK Britannias. I took them off my price list today because I'm told four to five weeks before I get anything. Who knows what four to five weeks brings any longer. Four to five weeks is ridiculous in this industry. It used to be four to five days. Now it's four to five weeks. And what we are seeing is a, um, I guess, an exclamation point um, on, on, on awareness. And we've talked all about this stuff over and over and over again. I'm sure it gets old to listen to, but it's happening in real time right now. And getting product is not any easier. And you can look at every major online retailer in the country. Their premiums have gone up at least a dollar or more across the board on just about every product they have in silver. And we're continuing to raise them again here today. And it's all based upon what we think we can get. Now, one other thing that I'd like to mention, earlier today I was told that the same thing that we saw a year ago in gold, where uh, the difference between spot uh, and um, the, the May futures contract is, is about 30 cents or more uh, away, spread between current spot and May futures, which is already well over $27. So when we try to get new product, it's based off of the May futures price. So in other words, there is the same, I guess you could call it um, uh, arbitrage situation going on right now between forward spot and, and current market. Uh, it, it's a situation where a lot of the dealers are actually having to jack up their spot price on their website right now because in terms of getting new product, you will not be able to get new product at, at the spot price that Comex is quoting. You have to go off of May, off this switch. Uh, and it's, it's a little bit complicated to explain, but simply to say this, that we're entering that situation right now where um, – you know, price discovery in this industry is becoming harder and harder and harder. When you sell out a product to go and secure the product is becoming very difficult. And the challenge now isn't just in getting product and paying for it. It's also in realizing that there are, that there are uh, games being played with the spot price on Comex. And the big dealers understand that, that this is putting them in a tricky situation also. So, uh, every dealer in the country had to jack up their spot price today higher than what Comex was talking about because if you sell out a product, you cannot buy it back from the distributors at today's spot price. You've got to go all the way out to the May contract. They will not use today's Comex price to lock it in. So these are crazy times, done again. And honestly, I truly believe we haven't seen anything yet. If it continues down this path, if we get to Monday and 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 the Russians are kicked out of SWIFT, like, they're talking about what does Monday look like? Uh, I don't know. If you told me we wake up to a four or five or six dollar gap up in silver, I'd say it's totally possible. 
If you told me we wake up to $2,200 gold, I'd say it's totally possible. And we are pushing the Russians away from the dollar. And I think at this point, they don't have a whole lot left to lose. They could peg their, their oil to gold or sell their oil for gold. They could peg their ruble to gold. And I think at the very same time, we are incentivizing the Chinese to consider doing the exact same thing with their SIPS system. CIPS, I think it stands for the Cross Interbank Payment System that they designed in conjunction with Russia. This is a, a, a um, alternative to the SWIFT system. And we are getting really, really close to the law of unintended consequences when we have politicians rather than economists. And really, the economists at, at the Fed aren't any better. But when we have politicians directing things right here that are going to inversely and negatively impact the dollar, I think... People need to buckle up because I'm telling you, as soon as this coming Monday, uh, I think there could be fireworks, which leads me into what you said earlier about the silver squeeze. I'm going to load up on futures contracts on Friday so that we can do business over the weekend because I have no idea what Monday brings. And I have a really strong suspicion that we open up Monday as the Russians are formally kicked out of SWIFT. Uh, with some fireworks. So that, that's the way I'm looking at things a week into advance. And the reason that gold and silver are held down both in price and in rhetoric is because it's the canary in the gold mine. It speaks to the frailty of the system. This is why gold and silver have not been allowed to rise. Look, Bank of America short 800 million ounces. Today, the price of, of silver is up 57 cents, call it 60 cents. They're out uh, $540 million they've lost today alone in the rise in silver based upon a, a short position of, of over 800 million ounces. The rumor is JP Morgan came in and bailed out the COMEX the other day uh, on, on March deliveries because there were more deliveries than there were uh, silver ounces in the registered category. And JP Morgan came in and made that silver available to avoid what could be a major short squeeze, a major run on COMEX, we're that close to these things happening. And um, any bank that would be stupid enough to be short 30 million ounces of gold and 800 million ounces of silver in this environment has a death wish. It's the same stupidity that put Bear Stearns out of business when silver went to $21 an ounce. If it weren't for these banks, which I think are in many ways are doing the bidding of, of the Western central banks, uh, because here again, if gold and silver were where they should be, uh, I think you would have a lot more panic in the streets, and it would lead the CB CBS Evening News. It would lead Jim Cramer's screaming about what's happening. It would be that way because it would speak to the frailty of the system. Instead, it gives fodder for them to say, well, look at gold and silver. They're not doing anything, even in these horribly inflationary, tumultuous times. It's crap. It's crap because the biggest money in the world will not stop accumulating it. Uh, I, I truly, truly do believe that the only way you can successfully manipulate these markets are to push them in the direction they are going, and it is moving in the opposite direction of being held down. The demand is off the charts. When you see every company in America selling Silver Eagles at north of $12, that tells you they cannot keep them in stock, and the mint is the model of inefficiency. When you see the deliveries that we are seeing, record deliveries coming off of COMEX and off the ETFs, there's a lot going on that is completely completely ignored by a manipulated price. And uh, I think when it does break, because of all the manipulation, when I think of the manipulation, I think of a giant hand pushing a beach ball further and further and further under the water. And when it finally pops, it pops up higher than anyone thinks possible. Well, I don't think it'll just come right back down, but you know what? The unintended consequences of lopping off demand, like pushing the Russians out of the SWIFT system, um, and, and I think in many ways, opening the eyes to the Chinese to incentivize all of these big institutions to de-dollarize and move away from the dollar, that cuts demand for the dollar and the Fed will not stop printing. You add more of something with less demand, you have falling prices, which in and of itself must see rising interest rates to compensate for the loss of value or purchasing power in the dollar. I just want to make one, one comment. Uh, if we were to take the price of silver or the price of gold right now of, of 2000 and let me just do a little math here, $2,041 and we divide it by seven, that's $291. If tomorrow morning or Monday morning, I'm not saying this is going to happen, but if the price of silver were, were valued at $291 an ounce, that's not crazy at all.
In fact, what that is, it's the geologic footprint of a seven to one mining ratio. And in a world that is massively accumulating silver, both industrially and monetarily, these are the kind of numbers that we can expect to receive. I just want people to know that to me, it's wealth, not an investment, but the investment potential is extraordinary. This is, in my opinion, the value proposition of a generation done again as, as the good Lord is my witness. I swear to everyone out there, I mean this to my core. This is the, the I think, one of the last trains out. And I hope I'm wrong, I really do, but I think we're on, we're on a fast track to crazy town. And I think it's, it's only gonna get crazier. So as always, I love being here. Thanks for the opportunity to continue to, to have these discussions and your friendship. And we'll, like I keep saying, we'll see this through to the end and see where it takes us. But um, right now it seems like we're heading to crazy town.